Praise God. Let's get into the word of God. I'm so happy to see all of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ah, God visited us already this morning through worship, through this powerful prophetic word, through the ministry. We should be like jumping like that for joy. Amen. I know the presence of God makes you feel like you want to sleep. But let, let me finish first and then you can just stay there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, good to see Pastor Joe and Tree coming back from Holiday, New York. Welcome back. Good to see you guys. Praise God. Today I want to speak about somebody special. His name is John the Baptist. And I think all of us, we can find ourselves in it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So my Bible verse today is Matthew 11, 2 to 3. Hallelujah. I don't think that is. Okay, it's visible. Praise God. John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard all about the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciple to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? This is John the Baptist in, the Baptist in prison, amen? Who was John the Baptist? I and mean, we all know John the Baptist, amen? He was prophesied in Isaiah 40 that he would be a voice of one calling in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This, this guy was prophesied before he was even born, amen? He was born out of a miraculous birth. His parents were old and the mom was barren. But the Bible said that they were righteous in the eyes of God. And they, be, they receive a visitation of the angel. And he tells, the angel is telling them that they will have a son. Amen? The angel visits the dad, Zachariah, and tell him what his son would be. So John the Baptist wasn't a, a person like any other. He was a special person human being that God has set aside for a certain task. Amen? Amen? Like each one of us. He was so special that God had to give him his own name. Praise the Lord. I mean, him and Jesus, God had to come and visit the parent and say, you shall call them. The same with John the Baptist. God spoke to Zachariah the dad. He said, you shall call him John which means Yahweh is gracious. Amen? Amen. 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 So this is the guy we're talking about this morning. This guy was a prophetic bomb. The Bible says that he will be filled with the Holy Ghost before he was even born. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says he will be filled with the Holy Ghost before his birth. He was such a prophetic bomb that when his mom was pregnant with him, he went to visit Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was, pre she was pregnant with Jesus. And when he heard from the womb of the mom, he heard the voice of Mary. He started moving. He's like, oh, there's a bomb inside of me. Because the prophetic in him was so strong. He knew that was the voice of the mother of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Imagine, you know, once he starts moving, the mom starts prophesying. This is how Holy Ghost said this man was. He would be filled with the Holy Ghost before he was born. And the Bible said that he would prepare the way of the Lord. He would bring many sons and daughters into repentance. Amen? Amen. And the Bible said that he grew up in the wilderness. We don't know when he went. But we know that he grew up where? In the wilderness. And the Bible said that he grew strong in the spirit, in the wilderness. I don't know about you. Most of us grew up with our parents. But him, God sent him in the wilderness. He was so special that he only, his diet was very, very particular. Locusts and wild honey. I think on our fasting we should try it. I don't know. 
We, we follow the movement on John the Baptist. We are the Baptist ones. When we fast, we go in the wilderness. We eat wild honey and locusts for our diet. Jesus. Eh? But the Bible says he's, he grew strong in the spirit. Not only was he filled with the spirit of God before he was even born, but he became even stronger in the spirit. And he was so dressed beautifully, amen? No issue with going shopping. Because it's only one style, camel's hair. Pastor Julep, you would suffer. You would suffer. <laughs> we have to dye the hair to change the colors. Women, are you hearing me? For the sake of the gospel, amen? So his clothing was camel's hair. No wonder why, when the time came, the Holy Spirit sent him out. He started going to preach the kingdom of God, the repentance. He didn't need no TV. He didn't need to go look for people. They followed him. They came looking for him. I think some of them were just wanted to know who's this crazy man. They were curious to see, yeah, who's the crazy man? Could it be that we are trying to fit so much that there's nothing people want to come see about us? Uh, 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 uh. Could it be that we want to fit in and then the, the, the people who don't know God, they come, okay, you are like me, you look like me, you smell like me, you're just louder than me. Could it be? That we are trying to fit in a system when God is trying to take us out of a system so that we can be a wonder for people to come and behold. That was John the Baptist. I don't know why he grew up in the wilderness. We don't know what his mama told him, if his mama told him, hey boy, grow up in the wilderness. I don't know if it's the spirit of God that pushing him to go in the wilderness. But whatever it is, it was a time with him and his God. Could it be that we want to be always surrounded, but we cannot hear God because God wants to take us in a place where we must be alone with him so he can speak, so that we can grow strong. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. He lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. Now I'm going to talk to those called in the ministry. Could it be that we want to go out so soon when God is not saying it's time for you to go? Could it be that we try to build something before it's time? And then when it has no fruit, then we get discouraged. We wonder if it's God who really spoke to us. Could it be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time we start hearing the voice of God, especially in these times and seasons where things are hard. But what was John's message in Matthew 3, 2? He always said, repent for the kingdom of he heaven has come near. That was his only message. And that message brought people around him and to him. And he would tell them, confess your sin and be baptized. Hallelujah. Amen. We need John the Baptist ministry to come back. Amen? Amen. He would call religious leaders brood of vipers and ask them to repent and show fruit of repentance. And when they asked him who he was, he was not interested in title or positions, but only on his mission on this earth. Hallelujah. Let's not run after title and position, but let's know the mission that God has called us for and run with the mission and the titles will follow us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. They ask him, are you the Messiah? He's like, no. Are you a prophet? He's like, no. Are you Elijah? He's like, no. He said, I am the voice of one calling out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. He was a prophet. He was the Elijah who was to come. But he said, no, I'm more than that. I don't want to stand by my title, but I want to stand by my mission, by what God has called me for. A title will follow me as long as I do what God has called me for. I am the voice. Oh, all we need is just to be a voice. 
the voice of where God is calling you to be. Be a voice in your workplace. Be a voice in your family. Don't be a title, a position, you know, position push person. I'm the husband, don't I do this. No, my mission is to lead you. Therefore, the title will follow me. Be mission oriented. Let your voice give you your position. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Hey. I'm preaching myself happy this morning. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He is the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. That was his mission. He did not care if he was called prophet. He did not care if he was called the Elijah to come. He was the Elijah. Jesus said it himself. He was the Elijah to come. Did you, John the Baptist knew his position? I'm pretty sure he knew. Hallelujah. But he just said, I'm the voice of one calling in the wilderness. He was a humble man who understood his place. He said, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But he said, but someone is coming soon who's greater than I am. So much greater that I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That was the kind of humble man he was, amen? He just pointed people to Jesus. And today we want to point each one of you to Jesus, amen? We want to point you to Jesus. In John 1, 21, 29, 30, the Bible says, that the next day when John saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, and I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Ghost. I have seen and I testify that this is the, cho the God's chosen one. This was John the Baptist, amen? He was the forerunner. He was the, the, oh, the last, you know, Old Testament prophet before the gospel, before a new movement of Jesus. Hallelujah. He came to prepare a way for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He baptized Jesus, and he heard the voice of God. I'm going somewhere. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. John the Baptist was there every step of the way. He was there when Jesus was convinced in the womb of his mom. He was there before Jesus came. The Bible says he was full of the spirit of God before his birth. Hallelujah. There was no doubt in John the Baptist of his mission, number one, and of who Jesus was. My title today is When God Sins Silent. Hallelujah. When do we do, what do we do when God seems silent? The Bible said that he was so bold that he denounced the sins of the king and that was put him in prison. Amen? That's what put him in prison. Because he was so bold, he would speak whatever the Spirit of God would show him. And that's what happens sometimes when you say things people don't want to hear, amen, when they are from God. King Herod put him in prison. The Bible said that he was in prison for about two years. Amen? But this is the guy who said, I must decrease so that he can increase. 
when the disciple of John the Baptist, they saw Jesus and his disciple baptizing a lot of people. They came to John the Baptist. He said, the man you call the Messiah, all the people are going to him now. There was a competition happening. And he said, hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 let me remind you who I am. I'm here to point to that guy. Let all of them go to that guy. I know right now I'm very popular, but I must decrease so that he can increase. And that should be our mission in life. So they may decrease in our own ways of doing things, in our own capacity, in our own, you know, I don't know what it is that makes us feel big and powerful so that Jesus can increase inside of us. Am I talking to somebody? We must decrease so that he can increase. So that's where we come at. The Bible said that he was about two years in prison when King Herod put him in prison. And then after he was killed because the wife was not impressed with him. Amen? We won't even go there. So John the Baptist, here he is in prison now for about one year. And he is hearing everything that Jesus is doing. Jesus who is his cousin. Jesus whom he prepared the way for. Jesus whom he baptized. Jesus whom the Spirit of God showed him he is the one. He is the Lamb of God. Here he is in prison. And doubt is filling his heart. I want to talk to people who are going through things. You are in very tight places. You get in a place where you start questioning everything you've ever believed. Brother Ojo, it's so good to see you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I see why Juliet was so happy today. <laughs> a little bit happier today. Praise the Lord. So G John the Baptist started to question, to question. So he asked his disciples, can you go ask Jesus? Are you the Messiah we've been expecting? Or should we keep looking for someone else? This is the same guy I just spoke about. Born filled with the Spirit of God. Knowing his mission in life. When he saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The one that God told me, when you see the Spirit of God on him, you know he's the Messiah. Then he's in a place where he's suffering. I don't think he was in a remand center where there's a nice room. I believe those prisons were bad. One of the things when the devil wants to destroy you, he isolates you. Be afraid of being isolated. Every time you don't want to see anybody, every time you don't want anybody to talk to you, be afraid because the devil is trying to isolate you because he knows when he isolates you, he's going to fill you up with darkness until you're going to start doubting the very thing you believed in. So John the Baptist, he knows he's going to die. And he's seeing, he's hearing everything that Jesus is doing. And he's sending a message. First of all, Jesus, why are you not visiting me? I'm your cousin with everything I've done for you. How many of you go in that place sometime when you feel tired and overwhelmed? You're like, God, but I've done everything right. How come I'm in this situation? I prayed, I fasted, I asked you. You let me go into this relationship. You let me go into this financial crisis. I've done everything you asked me to do. Does that happen to somebody today? And you're like, God. Then the devil starts filling your mind with doubts. John the Baptist, I'm pretty sure he was thinking. Everything I've done, was I dreaming? Do you know why? Because he did not accept, expect the Messiah to come the way he came. Everybody thought that the king would come and take his throne. But Jesus came as a humble servant. He was healing, touching. He was not after to take the kingdom of Rome or whatever. So John the Baptist is wondering. Listen to me. I don't think he was doubting because 
He didn't believe he was the Messiah. I think he was overwhelmed and confused. Wondering, did I do everything I've done? Was it in vain? Was it really the Messiah? It is so amazing how the devil will bring you to places where you are playing, when you are in a place of, play, of, of pain, in a place of lack, in a place of desolation, in a place of mourning. The devil will bring you to places. I tell you, if it happened to John the Baptist, it can happen to you and me. And God, it's God is still there healing the sick. But God, I'm a faithful tither. It's been a year. I don't even have a job. And you start doubting every revelation word that God has given you. God, I pray for this husband and I got married. But now he has abused me. You start doubting the faithfulness of God. You start doubting the character of God. Because you look at your situation and this doesn't line up with what you believe about God. Today, I want to encourage you today. That even if you don't understand the plan, you must trust the purpose. Yes. You must trust the purpose of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't care what the devil says. Most of us, we experience season when we feel as if we've been abandoned. You feel abandoned by God. You speak to him, he, does, he, doesn't, he doesn't reply to you concerning that very thing. You're like, God, why have you forsaken me, God? It's not because he's silent that he's absent. It's not because he's not changing your situation that he doesn't hear your prayers. Listen to me, people of God. It's not because your plans are not working out. That his purpose shall not be accomplished. Your plans might go into water. But God said his destiny and purpose shall stand. It doesn't matter what. Are you hearing me this morning? Today I want you to take charge of your spiritual life. I said, devil, I refuse to believe every word you're telling me. Emotion, I refuse to take me into places of unbelief. So John the Baptist sent his disciples to talk to Jesus. And Jesus tells them in Matthew 11, 4, 6, Go, give John this report. The blind see again. The crippled walk. The lepers are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised back to life. And the poor and broken now hear the hope of salvation. And tell John that the blessing of heaven comes upon those who never loses their faith in me, no matter what happens. Tell Cross Point that the blessing of heaven comes upon those who never lose their faith in me, no matter what happens. Listen to me, no matter what happens. The New King James Version said, Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. God said, do not lose your faith. Even if it looks like the way your plans are going doesn't match up with what you think I should have done in your life. Listen to me, people of God. Do not lose your faith. I spoke to the lady last Sunday. She said, Pastor, I haven't been here for a month, if you are not called, I will not have come. I said, why? She's like, I need a husband, pastor. And I look, when we did the line, there was no man in this church. Listen. It doesn't matter. Even if it seems like God is not answering your prayers, do not lose hope. In him, bless are those who do not lose hope in Christ. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, 21, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. It doesn't matter what. We will plan our life, but no one thing 
The purpose of God shall stand in your life. Today I decree it, I declare it over your life. Never lose your faith in him. No matter how your plans are going to water. Never lose your faith in him. When you look at your finances, God, I can't even pay the bill. Do not lose your faith in him. God, I feel lonely. I have no friends. Do not lose your faith in him, no matter what happens. The Bible says in Timothy 2.13, if we are fa faithless, he still remains faithful. And he cannot deny himself. When you look at your life, there's no foothold on it. Rely on the character of God, which is faithfulness, which is love, which is generosity. Hallelujah. Do not, do not look at your situation and think things, that's how things will always be. God is a faithful God. His purpose shall stand in your life no matter what. Now listen to me. John the Baptist, he said, I'm here to prepare the way of the Lord. Did he do his mission? Did he fulfill his calling? Hallelujah. Did the purpose of God stood in his life? Yes. Yes. Today I want to challenge you and encourage you at the same time. This is God's purpose for your life. He shall do it. Hallelujah. He shall do it. He is faithful. This is what I tell myself every day. Even though the purpose of God was accomplished, John didn't like the way things happened. He didn't like the way it was accomplished. Hallelujah. The purpose of God did not get accomplished according to John's plan. It got accomplished according to God's plan. Are you hearing me today? The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together. For good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. All things work together. I don't know what you've gone through in your life. I don't know what is your struggle today. But God is here to remind you that all things work together. All things, it doesn't matter what it is. The good, the bad, the ugly, the harsh, the disappointing. God is with you and is for you. We can trust God's character in whatever situation we go through. Just because he seems silent doesn't mean he's not there, people of God. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter the struggle you go through. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Many are the plans in the heart of a man, but it is the purpose of God that will stand. Today, I want you to trust the purpose. Even if the plan doesn't make sense, trust the purpose today. When it comes to your life, do not lose faith. And just keep showing up. Keep showing up. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. How many of you, sometimes you're like, God, where are you? Lately, it's been like a prayer of my life. God, where are you? Where are you? Some of you might be struggling with sickness. You're like, God, where are you? Why I don't get healed? God says, trust the purpose. Trust the purpose even in your pain. Some of you are struggling with finances. You can't find a job. Trust God. Trust the purpose this morning. Today, fill your heart and your mind with hope and faith. And take courage because he's never late. He's never late. He's always on time. I want you to rise up in the presence of God today. I want you to feel the heart of God for you. I love what Jesus said after he sent his disciple to tell John the Baptist. He said, on this earth, 
There's no greater man than John the Baptist. You see, Jesus did not shoot down John the Baptist. He didn't say, go tell John the Baptist, where is your faith? He didn't say that. He went to remind him that the mission was being accomplished of Jesus Christ. That the purpose that which Jesus Christ was called was being accomplished. Today, once God wants to remind you that when you feel like you are falling and failing, he looks at the devil, he's like, have you seen my servant Jada? Even if things are not working out, there's no greater worshiper than my daughter Jada. When things are not working and you're suffering, you say, have you seen my daughter Nilda? Even in a hardship, God speaks always kindly. God says, you know what? Just don't lose your faith and trust my purpose this morning. Trust my purpose because my purpose will stand. It doesn't matter how life looks like for you. It doesn't matter how harsh your situation it is. Trust the purpose. Trust the purpose. Trust the purpose. Today we need to trust the purpose. That regardless, seems like things are going around and around and around. You don't seem to arrive to that desire plan, that desire calling, that desire business, that desire husband, that desire wife. I don't know what it is. You seem like you're still struggling. You haven't found. God wants to tell you today, just trust the purpose. Trust the purpose. Even if you seem like I'm not talking about that issue you're asking me, just trust my purpose. My purpose will stand. My purpose for your life will stand. God is like, do not fall by be, being offended by me. Don't take offense in me. Because if you take offense in me, there's no hope for you. But he says, blessed are you who keep the faith no matter what. No matter what, keep coming. No matter what, keep showing up. No matter what, keep giving. No matter what, keep serving. No matter what, keep the fire alive. No matter what, trust the purpose. Trust the character of God. Trust his faithfulness. Even if it looks like there's no faithfulness in your life. He can never deny who he is. Trust his love for you. Even if you feel like you don't feel loved, accepted, just trust his character. That he is for you and not against you. That he is rebuilding you. A strong woman, a strong servant of God. God says, keep the mission alive. And what is the mission? To keep serving this living God. Listen to me, people of God. In times of hardship, it's not time to sit down. It's time to serve. When you are discouraged, it's not time to stay at home and sit. Because the devil will eat you up. It's time to be a blessing. Listen to me. Are you hearing me this morning? I don't care what kind of situation we go through as Christians. The Bible said that the grace of God is sufficient. We need to keep standing and trust the purpose. And remember the mission while we are here is to fulfill the call of God upon our lives no matter what. Are you hearing me? That if we have to die in prison like Paul, at least the, like, like John the Baptist, the mission was finished. Trust the purpose. Hallelujah. It looked weird that God would send his son to become like one of us. It looked weird that John the Baptist would have to baptize Jesus. But that was the wilderness of our God. The awesomeness, the manifold wisdom of God. It doesn't make sense, the roads he brings us through. But one thing we can trust, it is that his purpose will always stand in our lives. It doesn't matter how painful the road is, God is still faithful. He is still in the business to fulfill destiny upon his children. The mission is still alive and well. 
We must rise up. Do more than we've ever done before. When things get harder, we rise up stronger. We serve stronger. We give more and we trust the process. The destiny of God upon our life, no matter what. Am I talking to a church that is alive? Today, God wants to remind you. Don't look at your situation to define me, God. Look at your situation through my love and my character. Don't look how hard life is and you define what kind of God I am. God said, no, 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 no. Look at situation through the lens of the character of God. He's good, even if life doesn't seem good. He's gentle, even if life has been rough to you. He's faithful, even if you feel like there's no faithfulness in your life. He is a generous God, even if you feel like you have nothing. He's full of mercy. He abounds in love for you. Are you hearing me this morning? God wants you to know that you need to trust him. Just trust his purpose and keep showing up. Keep showing up. Keep showing up. Hallelujah. Keep lifting up those hands. Say, God, I trust you no matter what. God, things have not gone the way I thought they should go. But I trust your purpose upon my life. Trust today. That's the word I have for you. He might seem silent on that situation of yours, but it doesn't mean that he's absent. He's there. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here. for miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for who he is in our lives. I feel the Spirit of God says that my goodness abounds in your life. My goodness abounds in your life. Regardless how dark your situation is today. My goodness abounds. Some of you, you may be here, maybe wondering, God, I wasted my life. I don't see anything good out of it. And I'm advancing in age all the things I dreamed of doing. I haven't seen them come to pass. Some of you, you might be in a place you like, God, maybe I should stop believing. For that job, for that business, for that ministry, maybe it's just my brain that playing crazy on me. Maybe it's been 10, 15 years. I don't see it happen. Maybe I should give up. God says, keep the faith. Keep the faith and trust my process.
want you to hold the hand of the person on your left and on your right. I'm going to ask my leaders to go in the back. Just go among people. We're just going to minister life. Just go hold the hand of somebody you don't know and start ministering life. Remind them who they are in God. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, God, is there any other way but not my will, yours be done? Not my process, not my purpose, your purpose. Even Jesus struggled. He said, God, how, why have you forsaken me? God wants to know today that his pleasure is on you. Hold tight the hand of that person and start ministering life to them. Tell them to trust the process. Trust the character of God upon your life, regarding your life, your future, your children. Trust his love for you that he will lead you to green pastures. Lift up their lives before God and put back courage and strength in them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, today we speak life. Today we pray for miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives. Father God, we pray today that we, you would open our eyes so that we can see. Father God, for that person who needs a job so badly, Father God, you're the God who provides for them. Open the door for them today. For that person struggling with their health, Father God, let your healing power flow in them and through them. That person filled with doubt and desperation, I pray that the light of Christ may come. Father God, we minister life today in your people. We minister hope today in your people. We thank you, Father God. You're filling every heart. You're filling every mind with your hope, with your strength again. With your zeal, mighty God, with your passion for you. You're filling every broken body with your healing, God. You're restoring the brokenness in our hearts today. Father God, we thank you for your miracles. We thank you, Father God, that we see as you see, God. Today we receive your love, we receive your touch. We receive your strength, everlasting King. We thank you, God. For where faith is, miracles happen. You said, blessed are those who keep faith no matter what. We thank you, Father God, for this is your church that is full of faith, full of hope, no matter what we go through, God. No matter how dark the darkness becomes, we know that your glory will shine through it, God. We thank you, everlasting King. God, we break every prison door that has confined your people, Father God. Lord, we break every chains that have made your people 
ineffective, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, today I rebuke the devourer over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I say that the blind shall see in this house. Hallelujah. That the deaf will hear. And the mute will speak, Father God, of your glory. Father God, we thank you for your grace that is forever abundant in this house. We thank you for the might of God in each one of us today, God. We shall rise strong and mighty. For those who put their hope and trust in God shall do great, mighty exploit, God. We thank you for the spirit of the conqueror to rise up in this people. Thank you for a conquering spirit arising up of your people in this house and awakening, mighty God, in the hearts of your people. Every voice of destruction, of doubt, and despair must flee from this place in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall rise up strong and mighty. You shall overcome. You shall overcome. If you are here and you need a prophetic word, I want you to come in front. You are here, you need a prophetic word. I want you to come in front. I need my prophet, prophetess. Whoever can give a powerful word, come and give a word. Let God speak to you, His people this morning. It is well, it is well. It is well, my prophet, I want you to come. Whoever who knows can give words of the Lord. Reba ba 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 se ne ke re ba ba. Ye re ba ba se te ke re ba. Tu kurubo se ne ke re. Hey ye ba ba se ne ke re ba sodo. Hey ye mando korubo se ne ke. Pam pam, where are you? Come talk. Come pray for people. Reba ba se da. Come give words. Reba ba ba sodo korubo. Reba ba se ne ke re ba ba sodo ko. Miracle today, 
Manzi, come give a word of the Lord. Tiri di baba shere re baba seneke re baba seneke re baba sondoko pam 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 come give a word of the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship. Re baba seneke re baba shuto. Hallelujah. Miracle worker, come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Hallelujah. Come and do a miracle. We thank you, a God, for your word. A ghost forth, God. And let it accomplish miracle that which was absent for God. Come and do a miracle. A miracle. 